In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create an editable table. So we have an application that has a business object called Celebrities, and we're going to create a page that will have a table that will allow us to edit the information about those celebrities. To do that, we're going to use um, Oracle Jet. We're in the cookbook right now, and if you go to the table uh, examples, one of the examples is called Editable Table uh, or Editable Array Table. So if you go over here, you'll see the example, you can see how it behaves just by clicking here, you can double click and then edit rows okay? and you can see the information of the row that was edited if you scroll down you will have the information on what you need to do okay, so let's follow the instruction, the first thing is that this is based on an array data provider so to do that we're going to go into our page and into the variables and we'll define first a type so we'll create a type that would have the fields for a celebrity. To do that, we'll base our type on the REST service okay, that returns a celebrity, so a single celebrity, and we can then choose which fields we want to show, or we'll just mark all of them, and then we also probably want to give it a name, so something like celeb type would do here. Now that we have an object type, we can go and define a variable, and this variable is going to be of type uh, array data provider. We'll call this one uh, the celebs array and create it. And then there's a few things you want to specify here. For example, you want to specify that we have this celeb type as the type of object in this array and the ID field is the ID. Okay. So now we have an array that would host our variables, uh, so our celebrities. What we need to do next is define an action that would actually load the data into this array. So we're defining an action chain, we'll call it load data, and we're going to invoke a REST service that would get the celebrities. So we'll pick up our REST service to get celebrities. And then we're going to take the celebrities we just got from this REST call and insert them into our array. So again, we're using the assign variable. If we scroll down here, we can see here are the items that are returned. And if you look at the celebrity array data provider, there's a data part in it with the item. So we just map the items to the data like that. All right, so now we can go back to our page and define an event when we enter the page and in this event we're going to load the celebrities okay so this is when we are populating the array now that we have an array that would be populated we can simply drop a table on the page like that and hook the table up so the data would come from our array okay we also want to define which fields we want to show so let's click on this little table icon over here and just select the fields that we want to show in our table. We'll choose the name, rank and age over here. Okay, and there you go, you have a table based on an array in your page. So what's the next step in our Oracle Jet instructions? Okay, we switch over here and we say that we need to set the edit mode to be row edit. Okay, we pick up the table, we go into the properties we can search for a property okay, and set it to row edit. That was pretty simple. What's next? Next we want to create two row templates. So this is actually how the editing works. It switches the template of what is shown. You can see the HTML example in Oracle Jet shows you the two templates in here. One is called row template and the other one is the edit row template. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy those two templates. We can actually copy both of them in one go. We don't need to select just one of them. And we're going to, of course, modify it to match our table. Okay, so this is just basically kind of pure HTML and a little bit of JF, a JET component in there. So let me show you what we'll do. The first template is just um, a row with um, columns inside here and we're just going to use um, one of those columns. Okay, the sample in JET shows you much more complex behavior, so we're just going to choose and use one column here, one TD, 
tag and replicate it three times and just map it to the variables we're having which are a name and the rank and the age. And the next template again we're going to pick up uh, the second row or the second column sorry that has a usage of the OJ input text as a way to input value. As you can see you can have other types of controls as well in your table. We're just going to use simple input text so pick those up and again replicate it three times. Okay. And then change what we're pointing to. We're going to use again name, rank and age. Nice. And um, let's go back into our jet instructions. What's the next step for us? Next step is the little complex. We need to define a function that define which of the two templates is going to be shown. Okay. Um, and again, the JET demo actually has such a function available for us. So if you look at the JavaScript part over here and you scroll a little bit down, you would see the function called row render. This function refers to the two variables defined above it. So what you want to do is copy this whole section over. and then go into VBCS and in VBCS you click the JavaScript part and inside your page module okay, we're just going to paste our code. Okay. Now you'll notice that some of the code has red underlines under it so let's fix it. First thing is this reference to self so you can copy this line and paste it in here which will define what self is. The second thing is that we are using a bunch of, um, or a little bit of knockout and a, a jQuery. So you copy those entries and paste them into our function, just like you have it in the JET example. And then the top three items also here in the require go into the define in our example. If you've done everything correctly at this point of time, you should have a green check mark on the right side. One more thing we're going to do, instead of referring to the function as a self, we're going to use the page module and the proper way of doing it, which is using a page module prototype and the name of the function. Now that the function is defined, you can do reformat to have more nicely looking code and go back into your pages HTML. And now we need to add one more property to the table. The property is called row render. This is a read-only property and it's based on our page dot function and the function we just defined. So if everything works correctly so far, if you go back into the design view, you'd see the data. But if you go into the live view, not only will you be able to see the data, you'll be able to click on a row and edit the data. So this is how you define the editable table. Okay. The next step is to actually make sure that when you change things, they are saved somewhere. Okay, so, so far they are just saved in our array over here. We need to pass the information from our array into our source of data. To do that in our example, we're going to take a button, bring it and put it down here below the table, for example and then define uh, what the button is going to say. Save, for example, and define an event on the button. So let's define a click event on the button. In this action chain, uh, there are multiple ways to save. I'm going to use a way that is not very efficient, but works. I'm going to use a for loop. So basically, I'm going to loop over each row in my table and save it into our database. So the for needs to be mapped to an array and we have this array, okay, it's basically the list of items. So map the data as what we are looping over in here. It's the first step. And then you're going to define what to do with each one of those items. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, set the specific row into a variable. So we're going to define a new variable for this function. And we'll define the new variable. We'll call it celeb to update. And the type of the variable is the same type that we used before, the celeb type. Okay. So this is the specific record we're going to update. And we're going to use an assign variable action mapping 
the data from our array into this record. Now, if you look in here, inside the current, you'll see that we have a variable called index that indicates the current record that we run. Okay. So, if we just take the data from our array and map it into the current record that we want to update, you'll see that it's hard coding the zero value. We, of course, don't want a hard coded value. We want to use the dollar current um, index. Okay. So, this would change each time we run and pick up the right record from our array. So now we have this record in a variable and we're going to then call our REST service and pass this variable over. Okay, so the REST service that we're calling is going to be the patch operation because we're updating the record. We need to provide the ID of the record we're updating and this is coming of course from our current record or the select for update and the ID field over there and then we need to provide the body of what are we updating in terms of fields and this would basically be the whole record that we have here in the uh, celebrity to update so just drag this and map it to the body and the last step is to notify that we save the data. So put it on the other side of your foe, what happens when you succeed, and just put out a message. For example, you can indicate that the records have been saved or updated, and you can have it as a um, permanent or transient message. Right, at this point of time, we can go back to our page. You can either run it or go back into the live view, okay, and work with the page. So we'll go over to our data do some updates to the data. For example, we can change the name here, change the age, okay, so this would be 50, we can change Beyonce's age, for example, and then once we're happy with the changes, click the save. We're actually now scrolling and looping through each one of the records, saving the data for each record into our database, and when it's done, we get the message that the records have been updated. To prove that the data is there, go into the business object, look at the data, and you should see your changes with the 50 over here, name change, and the 44 over here. So that's an updatable table inside the VBCS application.